All right. Test testing. Anyone? Y'all hear me? All right. So hey, how's everyone doing tonight? Uh, my name is James Brundage. Been painting Warhammer for really a long time. James, you ready? Yeah. Moment. All right, so here we go. Um, again, my name is James Brundage. I'm out here at Immortals Inc. doing a little paint stream. Uh, Josh and them here has been nice enough to let me host this a couple times. Um, and they got a lot of good stuff going on out here. Uh, check them out on, on Facebook. Uh, they have a Patreon page to check out as well. And uh, streaming on Twitch too. So, uh, tonight we're doing uh, Estrella Soulbright, a uh, Stormcast Eternal, one of the new Sacrosanct models. Uh, comes in a couple pieces here. We're going to be painting her up like the anvils of the Helden Hammer, kind of a black uh, armor with gold and all kinds of stuff. Here's an example of one of them that I've done, kind of getting the skull helmet motif going on them. And uh, she's going to be done a lot like that once we, once we get that going. She's riding on this big boy right here. So, uh, a lot of details, but really looking forward to painting this one. We also have a raffle, a giveaway that we're doing tonight. A little while back, I painted up a, uh, a Mechanicus Tech Priest Dominus. Uh, kind of did a custom scheme with uh, some, some custom pieces on it. Realized I'm not going to be using him. So, uh, over the course of time, we're going to uh, be doing a little raffle. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, just uh, type in exclamation raffle and uh, that'll go ahead and enter you in that and we'll probably uh, probably be drawing that around 7 15 7 30 maybe about halfway through kind of keep an eye on how we're doing here so let's go ahead and get started with our model so the best the thing that we found over time was when we're starting with these uh, black armored models is that I want to do my best to spray it black first and then leave it alone and kind of avoid all those details at first and come back to those later and and do all the, the black armor details. It can be a little tricky sometimes doing black armor. I've seen it done a couple different ways where you can do kind of a colder feel. You'll see that on like some older Sisters of Battle models where it's all highlighted in blue so they'll start off with say like uh, like Cantor blue and work all the way up to the lighter blues to get this kind of bluish tinted kind of hue colder black armor this one uh, we're doing gray as you see here in the examples here hey, hey what's up Ron? Uh, we are uh, starting off with some some darker grays and working that up to just kind of get this this grayish armor I don't want it to be too much because there's so much else going on on these models as you see here she's got all this detail uh, around there with all these like uh, kind of robes and gold trim lines and stuff so keep the uh, keep the armor kind of muted and uh, let's get going we're gonna get rolling right into the gold trim start with that first so Shake this up. Get started with some Balthazar gold. Uh, using up a wet palette here. It's probably going to be really bright though. So I'm just going to kind of keep it off the screen if anyone has any questions as we go along with uh, paint techniques, any mixes, or what we're using. Uh, use primarily uh, GW paints or Citadels, just what I'm comfortable with. Um, but there's plenty of other ones out there that work just as well. Had a lot of luck with P3 paints as well and some Vallejo but they can get a little uh, thin sometimes on certain ones just depends on what you're working on so all right so we're just gonna go ahead and take some Balthazar's gold and start going on these trims here uh, it's going to be a lot lighter when we're done 
we really want to work our way up eventually to this retributor goal. It's a really, really bright. And uh, if you don't, if you don't start with a good base, you'll see right through it to the uh, to the black base below. And if you just leave that go without putting a wash over top of it, it's just too yellowish and bright for me, um, for my taste at least. And that's not really what what I'm going for. Paint, repainted my Stormcast Eternals, probably make fun of me for it uh, amongst my group of uh, gaming friends, but I've uh, repainted my Stormcast two or three times now, can't decide on a color scheme. It's kind of one of those where once you get a color scheme for these guys, they're really, the whole army is going to look like that. There's not a lot of variation, not a lot of crazy colors like you'll see in some of the other armies. I've been working on on the side like I don't deepkin and stuff where they're all on these crazy eels and shark mounts and stuff like that and they all each model is very unique uh, lots of colors uh, if you really want it to be if you want to kind of go crazy with that and it can look really cool and uh, I like I like the idea of this one being you know a nice uniform army in the end too but it's kind of one of those like find a color scheme that I like and then then I realized that oh, I have to paint this on like 80 models and then bail on it and then this one though I just really really like that that black armor and kind of the skull helmets after reading a lot about the lore to the to the storm host became a really big fan of that just trying to get in these little small details here and it's okay if we mess up I kinda got the chest plate a little bit there with some gold but that's why I'm doing this first instead of having to go through and you know spend all this time putting three or four different highlight layers for the black armor to just come back like this and then hit it and and mess that up and then have to go back and rework all that and then we're going to be doing a wash over this gold to really bring out those details. So I want to go ahead and get this done first. And then go to, to some other layers, even though these might be on top of, of certain layers here. Notice everyone's kind of got their own style of what they like to to build it first and paint it first or, or build everything as one assembly. I'm very much a sub-assembly kind of person. I notice that if I take her and put her on the mount, now immediately I can't paint all this detail here and the underside of her cloak is is covered up as well. So I'm going to be able to do them separately, especially you know with her legs interfering on the sides of the tracoline. Maybe by the end of the night we can decide what a Dracoline actually is. It's a dragon, cat, dog, cat, cat, dragon, I don't know. Seems that everything in their army is a weird mishmash. Some hybrid creatures. So, just going to kind of keep going on here make sure that we cover all of the gold detail there's plenty of it to be found have some kind of fun projects coming up kind of want to give a shout out to um, there is another local artist named Kristen Darby has a channel of her own called KD Paints Minis does a really 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 good job with stuff I've seen two of us have entered handfuls of things uh, over at the uh, games workshop over in Eastgate um, 
in Mayfield, mm-hmm. back and forth, had a couple things here and there, and then she streams, you know, throughout the week, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, some other times too. Um, a lot of it painting, all kinds of stuff, not just Games Workshop, but on February 15th, the two of us are going to be doing a sort of a paint off here. We're both painting some rubric marines um, for about two hours and see how far each person can kind of get on their own rubric marine. So that should be fun. should be interesting to see how each person's style kind of kind of differs. Just kind of get around here, do the weapons. Tons of gold details on these. You really probably notice once we finish these, not really going to be a whole lot of other things on the model to paint. Black Armor is going to take a little bit of time to do all the details on it. But overall, that's really it. Once I get that cloak finished though, I can glue it down to the to the model and not have to worry about holding it by just the model itself. I'd like to put it on some type of handle or a base or something like that, but it's just wasn't really working to stick it down with some putty or anything. snag this other knee pad over here to kind of break up all the black armor in case anyone's curious using uh, some Windsor and Newton series 7 brushes they're kind of a watercolor brush at least they're marketed as one but I've been using them for years and have only had good luck with these things. They hold a really, really, really nice point. Uh, so, you know, if you get a size one or a two, it's a nice size brush, but it holds a really fine point to make details, detail work easy where you're not constantly switching brushes where you can, you know, say, okay, I want to sit down for a couple hours, bust out some bigger areas of detail, and then do some fine, fine detail work, and you don't have to switch between brushes, uh, especially if you're using the same color. It just makes life really easy. So definitely recommend those. Um, kind of have a mix of brushes though. Uh, between these ones, some of the bigger ones, the wash brushes and uh, dry brushes, just use the GW ones because you're messing them up and they do they do a good job for what they are. But if you've got one where you know you want something to really do most of the work, and it's something where you're going to be doing a lot of fine detail work and putting down some layers and you want me to want to switch over to some some freehand type stuff you know you kind of want to good do all definitely had good luck with these uh, saw another one there's a rose it's like rose it's not rose art like the kind that we would see like school materials paint stuff but it's a uh, company out of I think the UK I want to say and Apparently they have some really, really, really great sable brushes as well, so I kind of want to give those a try too. It's important to make sure that you know you kind of clean your brush every 15, 20 minutes or so, even if you are just doing the same color for a while. It builds up in the, the very end here and can really wreck that brush. Uh, and unless you are in the mood to spend a lot of money on brushes over a long period of time, which I'm not, try to keep them all in good shape. I'm going to keep them working here. Once we get these done, I'm going to move on to the cloak. And let that dry. And while that dries, move over and do some work on the Dracoline a little bit. Kind of you know, shift back and forth between these two models uh, until it's time to glue them together. But just kind of have to do that out of necessity and let one dry while we work on the other. And then put them together. 
I know amongst the community, Stormcast might catch a little bit of flack because, you know, say that they have a ton of models uh, where others, other armies might be lacking a little bit in either models or books. Um, rules updates, but I, for one, really, really like the new Sacrosanct models and the, the design and the detail that they've done for these guys. Kind of cool if you're looking for a big army of like battle wizards or battle mages, whatever you want to call them. Hit the helm here. And it's okay if we get it up into the into the kind of plume on top of her head because we're going to be coming back and painting that again with red and uh, that, that tends to be a pretty opaque paint so definitely if, if you know once you get used to the paints that you use uh, you kind of want to make sure you start with with ones that you're not too worried about that you're putting something opaque over top of it and then you can kind of keep going more and more opaque over time and covering up stuff if you make any mistakes so it's definitely okay to do obviously and then you just go ahead and cover up some of the little little details and stuff as you go there so all right we're just almost done here i want to make sure to get these few little details around our face And unlike the example that we pulled up earlier, we're going to be doing that, that skull motif over her skull kind of freehand over her face mask. So I'm not too worried about doing any really detail on her face at all because that, that's going to cover it all up anyways. So I would say for now, that's pretty good. We're going to set her off to the side, let those dry up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to hit the bottom of this cloak first. Uh, the inside of the cloaks are kind of done in like a pinkish in this scheme, and then the outer is going to be a nice bright red. All right, let's go ahead and just hit the inside of this cloak with the screamer pink. It tends to be a little bit more transparent, uh, especially over the uh, black undercoat that we have here. So I'm just going to hit it with a really, really light color and let it dry. And then we'll come back and do one more coat so it's even. I realize that this is going to be face down and covered up, uh, but I'm a little OCD with that type of stuff when I try to paint everything on the model. While we're at it, we're going to catch the inside of these robes as well, right up here near her arms. Because that is the inside of the robe. And the front part here is the outer piece. So, similar to, again, just like this here. I want the scheme to be where this is the outer, the inner part of each robe that they wear, and then the outer is going to be this kind of orangey or red. I believe there's just another small detail here on the inside of her arm where that also has some red so we're just going to get her pink and we're just going to get up in there and do that and then we'll come back and do red on the outer side actually looks like the bottom here is already dried again always depends on the temperature of where you're working and stuff it's pretty comfortable in, in here today so this is drying really quickly which is good we don't have to waste too much time on it.
and then I will get to it a little bit later on on the back side of her cloak there's a small little thorn that we're going to freehand on there uh, between that and the skull mask there's a fair bit of freehanding there um, it's done similar to tattoos and everything where you really want to thin down that paint to really 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 thin levels So, I'm set her off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the Dracoline. A lot of detail on its base that is going to take some time to get through. A lot of rubble. We're just going to go ahead and focus on the model itself for now, uh, the, the piece itself. Um, a lot of times you see where their bellies and legs tend to be a lighter shade than, than the upper parts there. So, I want to. Uh, it's, a, it's a gray right now. We primed it with uh, Mechanica Standard Gray. And I'm taking some Dawnstone for now. And I'm going to do the lower legs. I've already done the belly before gluing it down um, just to make life easier. Figured we don't even really watch that just because it's dry brushing. But we're going to do that up the sides, up the bottom part of the tail, and then uh, fade it in between Dawnstone and Mechanica Standard that we have here. And then we'll wash the whole thing. With, uh, with some Drakenhop Nightshade uh, blue to kind of give it a nice blue tint and then I want to go up a little bit more of purple into the top. Kind of had to think of what we would really want to see, what kind of color scheme I would want um, if I had the, the black and gold of the rider. I liked what they did with their original model. Um, you can kind of see it in the picture of the link for what we did for the video. But it was just kind of a standard, kind of a lighter gray color to go with the gold armor that she was wearing. And it just didn't, it seemed like something I kind of wanted to change up. So uh, it's going to be close to that just because I, I did like certain parts of that color scheme. I just want to maybe just make it my own just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some Dawnstone here and a big old dry brush. And again, we're just work that into the bristles. Uh, nice and dark. You don't want to spend too much time on one area because it'll really get mounded up. But we're going to take that, keep it pretty, sort of wet, and then just kind of cut it off about there. And then we'll blend between the two later. But you want to make sure that you get enough on the model to start with. Because then. We'll come back and do more layers to make it even lighter towards that and then maybe take a little bit of the purple that we put up top here and then work it into the to the hands and feet where they get a little bit darker. If it doesn't look like it wants to stick because it's drying let it go, come back to it later. Don't try to force it because that's when you start getting some weird rough patches. If you notice like right here on the back, like it's not really laying down right very well. You know, you can maybe shake the paint a little bit more, which I might go ahead and do and get a little bit more on the brush. Because I still, you know, don't want to take forever doing it. But I don't want to get too much on the brush to where it's just a mess. And we're going to come back in here and do the bottom side of this too. Really lighten up the back of those legs. Just work your way up the model. Kind of think of a drawn invisible line all the way around it where you want to cut off the 
the fade of the skin. You get up underneath his neck and his face. Now, And you notice once we hit hit it with the wash, it's really going to darken the whole model down a lot. Um, I'm putting a fair bit of work into getting the fade from the top of the model to the bottom done really nicely here, and it's going to feel like the work really got undone once we put the wash on it. But if you kind of go back and you do the same thing again after washing it with the same paints, it makes a really really nice. Uh, gradient on the surface of the model that you probably would, you know, you'd be able to do with an airbrush, but I don't have an airbrush and I haven't learned how to do one yet. I really want to learn how to do it, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Don't need to be shy with it. And you could really take this same theory here and apply it to horses, the, the dragon mounts that they have. Uh, you could go from lighter to darker to the bottom and just kind of flip the whole idea there. The same theory I think applies to tanks really anything you know take your your main tone that you want take a lighter tone across there and then get the two on a palette mix them together and then use that to to kind of feather the two colors together so I'm gonna set them down. we've got a palette with some dawnstone here gonna take a little bit more dawnstone get it in there a fair bit here. Shake up some Mechanica standard that we used in our base coat and blend the two together. And use a little bit of water. And you see at this point my brush is really starting to get built up with paint because we've been dry brushing a lot of that so I'm just going to kind of squeeze it out. I don't want to wash it right now uh, with water because it's just going to waterlog the brush and then you'd have to set it off to the side and let it dry while doing something else. Uh, so for now we're just going to do that and I'm going to come back in here and look for the areas where this light color has stopped and use this and press in there and transition the two colors together. But you can kind of already see where that's working. You don't want to do it too heavily, just like kind of let it go on the surface. Once we wash the model over and go back with a highlight, a lot of this will kind of get lost into the to the background of the model or the, the lower layers, which is good because it's subtle, but you'll know it's there. Sometimes you can, I'll even use my fingers to just kind of smudge it up and through.
All right, so that's really where we're at right now. So what we're going to do, we have Estrella drying over there from her cloak and all that. What I want to do is now put a wash of the Drakenhoff Nightshade all over the Dracoline and then let that dry while <clears throat> I go back and start working on her again. Uh, we'll do the, the, the cloth on her and come back and do the, the cloth that hangs down the sides of the Dracoline and maybe the, the saddles and stuff as well once that dries. So again, Drakenhof Nightshade. I want this to go on fairly th uh, thin in certain spots, but also to really take the tone of this model down. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it here. And then as we apply it, grab some water and just spread it around. the water take that thing and run it all the way down the legs this stuff can get very dark very fast as you see right here so keep applying water to it especially since we're doing a skin tone here and I want this to be nice and smooth right down you don't want to waste too much time once you start because the areas where you dry and then you go back to add more wash, you're going to see them start to layer up over each other if you go too slow. You can fix that with taking some of your, your, your uh, skin color that we use, that gray, and kind of going back and seaming the two together where it pulled up. But if you could be avoided, then I wouldn't even, you know, just do this so you don't have to go back and waste the time on that. So we're just going to keep moving around the model, making sure just to not miss all these spots in here. Sometimes I won't even bother gluing these type, type of cavalry models down on the base. Um, just because, as you see here, it can be a bit of a pain to get underneath it. Uh, this one's got a, a little bit of an easier stance where one leg's up, so you can actually work under there. But that's just the way that I kind of geared. I don't like to, you know, get a lot of stuff in my way. Uh, models that have like a rifle that go across their chest or something like that—that that, that can kind of be a a pain too if you want kind of an open space to work on. But again, that's just kind of how I work. So now it's getting a little heavy on the inside of the legs, so just keep adding a little bit of water, making sure to move it around. You'll start to get used to after time of how much to add as you go. You don't want it to be so wet that it stops kind of staining the surface of the model, that blue color. And uh, you'll know when you added too much water because it'll start to really recede and not stick to the surface of the model. When you're washing like this, if you slow down, you'll you'll get a little bit more wash on the model. Let a little bit more come off your brush, and then I'm gonna do just that on his head because I want a lot of these areas up in here where he's got a lot of these kind of scales and spines coming out of the top of his head to be darker. But it really should bring out a lot of nice detail once you get up into there. <laughs> Some friends commenting from a spa right now and having way more of a relaxing time than I am, I bet. But this isn't too stressful either. So, just about done with this.
part of it. Just get the outside of his upper leg here. Toss a little bit more water on it, let it dry. Kind of step back and take a good look over it, making sure that you didn't miss anything or that certain areas are pulling up more or less than you want them to. It's a pretty good example you'll see on this back leg right here where there's some lines that kind of came out there that go on like the edge of like the leg muscles. And that will be taken care of when we go back through with the highlight. This guy is going to take some time to paint. I never said I don't get overly ambitious on these things saying, yeah, we can totally do this model on a stream. We'll be able to finish it in two hours. But already making some pretty good progress between the rider and the mount. It's got a comment uh, from Ben Love. How's the extra large paint handle? I am loving the, the extra large paint handle. Both paint handles actually are great. Um, you know, not to be all like, yeah, GW. But these things are pretty awesome. Some of these models get pretty big, um, especially if you're working on the base and just trying to get up and work in there to have something where you can just hold on to it and easy and manipulate the whole thing while you work on it. It's, it's pretty great. Um, definitely a fan of these things since they came out when they first <laughs> announced them. I will admit I kind of scoffed a little bit when like, I don't know if I need that. But from before I was probably using I don't know, wine corks and stuff with sticky tack and popping a model in there. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Still do that for some smaller models uh, that I work on, just pop it on an old paint uh, pot with some sticky tack. But for big models, it's, it's been pretty nice. Obviously, there comes a certain point where you're working on, like, you know, if they make like an Imperial Knight handle, that might be a little ridiculous to have this big old thing attached to a handle. But as far as this, it's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. Uh, I don't want to do any detail on the saddle of him yet because we're gonna be coming back and dry brushing the areas around the legs and I would just hate to do a bunch of work and put a bunch of color and detail here when we have to come back and do that. And if I hit those and just, un just undid a bunch of work that I've already done. Um, just coming in with the reminder that uh, within the, the Twitch stream, go ahead and type exclamation raffle if you'd like to be entered in. We're going to be doing a, a giveaway on the uh, Mr. Tech Priest or the Dominus here. Um, so we'll go ahead and probably draw that in about 7.30, 7.45 now. I'll push it back a little bit. Uh, give some people some more time to, to look at it, give it a shot so it's not like two people. But uh, yeah, so we'll raffle that off. Whoever wins it, we'll just uh, you know, send me a message and we'll get your address and send it to you. Or if I happen to know you, I'll well, we'll just hand it to you. So, painted him up a while ago, thought I had all these grand plans for Mechanicus and didn't end up using it. So, here he is, and now he's going to be someone else's. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the the red details here for her, which is gonna be a lot of the outer parts of her robes, the the handle of her her big staff, and then the top here because that's also going to get washed with Agrax Earthshade in the end, uh, just like the gold armor. So as long as I can keep you know, keep putting stuff on there that's all going to get that same wash. We can just do it all at the same time. It makes life way easier. We'll start off with corn red. I'm going to spoil my, my red recipe here for everyone. Go 
good one to start with. Uh, nice and dark, dries really dark, uh, good base for red. Really, really, really opaque. So as you see, all the gold that uh, that I got up there, it's covering it up like it's not even there. Um, it spreads around really well. Honestly, this is up there with like one of my favorite paints from them, along with like Rackarth Flesh. That does a great job at uh, preparing the area that you're painting for another color. Um, you can take Rack Arth Flesh paint it right over black um, and it's this tan that just covers up everything. Uh, which is nice. I mean, you know, you can, crazily enough, gray uh, makes a good base coat for red. It covers it up really well and it brings a, makes it really vibrant. Um, you try other colors or if you try with starting with other base colors uh, some of the lighter red colors can get really transparent a lot of the time uh, find that to be the same way with the green paints those can be really transparent if you don't start with the right base colors you're just gonna have a heck of a time trying to, to get a nice smooth coat or you channel your inner Duncan and do two thin coats which I am totally breaking that rule right now but it's working <laughs> sorry about that up a little bit closer so it's easier to see. All right, so there's that. We're going to hit the other robes that gets a little bit dry on us. So, uh, between areas just tend to wash the brush really quick. I don't want it to get too much into the ferrule. And then if we go to paint other colors, um, go to paint white or anything like that, and you've got a bunch of red paint stuck in your ferrule, and then you know you have these areas that just come out pink, and then you have to go back and rework any areas that are white. And if I can avoid having to paint an area that needs to be white more than once, it's a good day because those things can just become a nightmare. Uh, you mess, you know, you, you get too much, too thick of paint on that area, and you're going to spend way too much time trying to fix that area or make the paint run a little bit smoother around the white areas, or they just get really chalky and really uncooperative for you. Hit these robes around here, doing our best to avoid the, the screamer pink that we already painted in there and then hit the back side. So let me go ahead and get this other one here. Looks like our Draculine is almost dry, so we'll probably be revisiting that here soon too. And going back to doing some skin tone. It's definitely a fun model to paint so far. Uh, really gives you a nice mix of things to work on. You're painting some armor, you're doing some skin off of the Draculine uh, to try to, you know, practice uh, getting some of those nice smooth blending transitions in there. Uh, skin can be kind of tricky sometimes. Um, I think we might do some spots on the skin too. Uh, you know, big animal. Might as well put like some kind of freckle areas on its arms and maybe near its feet. Uh, it'll it'll be the same kind of theory as when we were doing the tattoos or freehanding. You start off with a base coat of really thin. I like to start off with, again, like I was saying earlier, rack hard flesh, uh, just because how thin it it can be put down. Um, you want to make sure that all the paint that you do is really thin when you do those uh, the layers or the the freehand or also looks like it's been painted on. Uh, you don't really want to see too much of the paint mount up on the surface of the model. 
if you keep it more watered down, it'll when it dries, it'll just blend right into the same layer of paint and look like it's you know kind of been drawn on uh, or or stitched in if you're doing fabric or something like that uh, to that measure. So again, as you see here, um, taking the corn red right over top of the black undercoat and with one decently thin coat here it's already covering pretty well it covers pretty smooth uh, you just gotta stay kinda disciplined with how much you're using at once uh, you don't want to get too much because then you're pushing a bunch around um, you know with nicer brushes with thinner bristles and ones that stay nice and clean you're not going to get a lot of paint mounted up on the surface so you won't see a lot of streaks you look really close there, there's some paint streaks but they'll you know once we once we get uh, some highlights in there uh, put a couple washes on there it all really just blends in you look really really close yeah it's not perfect but hey we tried our best So kind of excited to, to try this out on the board. Looks like an interesting model. She's really, really expensive points-wise, just like the units that she can have. Apparently you can take an entire army of these darn things um, in the game, and it's like 300 points for three of them. So uh, we'll find out in this uh, little path to glory that we're doing coming up here to see if uh, they're worth it or if you just get absolutely wrecked because you only have a few guys to, to move around the board. Versus, uh, versus my buddy's like 90 night goblins or whatever he's going to have at that points level. Let's see here. Alright, so we have some of these robes coming in here, and then there's some on her lap. I'm going to go ahead and do those in the same color as well. Being real careful again not to get the black armor. If we do, that's fine. The gold again is going to get another highlight too, and that'll cover up any air that you hit it. You can see I probably caught the edge of it there. Yeah, so as we were saying earlier, uh, went ahead and fired up the raffle. So go ahead and type exclamation raffle again. And you'll be entered in for our Tech Priest Tominus. Yes, at the, so at the end of the day, between all the different color schemes that I tried, this one just seemed it wasn't too, too difficult, too time consuming. I really liked the outcome. I figured I wouldn't mind doing it to a bunch of them. And the newer models are so varied that it'll look a little different for each one. Where these new sacrosanks, a lot of them have robes, and the old ones, while they're a lot of armor, you know, it's just going to be your basic truce. So I'm not too mad that those ones will be pretty plain looking.
All right, so that takes care of all of the red on her. There's all the red on the back as well. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry completely. Uh, if we probably did it now, put the wash over right now, it might pick up some of the paint and it'll dry a little funny. And definitely don't want that to happen. So, all right, let's go back to our Dracoline. We've already sprayed the whole thing Mechanica Standard gray and did a little bit of a dry brush towards the lower legs and Dawnstone. I'm just going to blot a little bit of the excess that really pulls towards the bottom. Something this big, we've put a lot of wash on it, uh, so sometimes it'll take a little bit of time to run towards the recesses. If I'm home, uh, some, I'm typically using a hair dryer. something like that just to make this work but again there's a lot of little areas underneath the model that are going to hold a lot of that that water so just blot it up so we don't hit it while we're dry brushing and then that'll just stain the dry brush and start moving things around like we don't intend them to and I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Dawnstone again with our large dry brush and hit those lower legs again once we do that you should really see some of these details start to pop up we're doing it really light we did a little bit of a heavier coat last time to get more of an opaque layer of this color on there but now that we've got all of the the wash on there I don't want to completely cover it up so I'll start with the back leg we're not going all the way to the top of the model I'm just gonna lightly around the knees a little bit heavier as you get towards the the, the bottom of the foot uh, it's just natural for me to start off really heavy and then gradually lighten up as you get towards the top. Kind of hit some of those muscles. So now you already see that it created a pretty, pretty decent fade from the bottom of the foot to the top while still keeping some of that detail in the recesses of the feet. I want to do the same thing to his tail. So you're going to have to revisit your paint pot. Oftentimes you're working with a pretty pretty big surface area here. You're, maybe common that you know you kind of fight with the the wash, you know, gravity wins at the end of the day and it's pulling all of the the wash paint as it dries. So it may get darker like it did under the tail here where you see all the the pulling from that. Well, the darker part is supposed to be the top of the tail. So you may have to go a little bit heavier on the underside of that and just keep doing it really lightly until those marks disappear. Alright. Come back in with a little bit heavier just to make sure it covers up. If there are certain areas where you know you're going to want to, there just to be a little bit more light, just keep hitting those. And the way that we've already blended in the background, uh, or the, 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 the back layer of this, uh, it should keep that fade pretty, pretty good as you go.
So then once we're done with this, I'll probably take a lighter color and then kind of just follow the, the, the details and the muscles to really bring some of those out. And you'll get some, some nice details and then towards the very end, mix again the Drakenhoff Nightshade with some Lamian Medium, get it really light and then put a layer over the whole thing and any time where we've dry brushed and it kind of makes a little bit of a fuzzy highlight it'll smooth all that right out um, so I'm just going to kind of keep putting this here every once in a while uh, go ahead and again type exclamation raffle uh, to, to get in on, on a raffle if you want to win this, this dude right here and uh, we're going to let that run uh, till the end of the stream till about uh, maybe a little bit before 8.30 We'll go ahead and uh, draw a name, see who see who wins it, and we'll send it off to you. And if you have no use for a uh, tech priest ominous, then for yourself. So, just gonna keep kind of moving around the model here, making sure to hit some of these areas where we washed it. Keep it real light towards the bottom of the feet, working your way up the arms. fairly large model and this is makes up for a good percentage of the surface area of it so I really want this to come out nice and smooth and neat and look really really good just because of the amount of kind of real estate that it takes up on the model so yeah it takes a little bit more time but I think in the end it's gonna be worth it brushing here along the back side of his legs and his tail. getting really light towards the top because I don't want to darken or lighten the top of the model too much especially because our highlights up there are going to be from a different color and we're going to be doing all the scales and stuff up there in a lighter color blue and purple so, all right let's hit them around the face a little bit this big brush and should just bring this detail out real easily. So that's pretty much that. We're gonna move over. I'm gonna move over and pick up some Ulthuan Gray. Uh, it's almost white. I use it a lot of times for uh, doing white because it's just just a little bit grayer than than your uh, like ceramite white and stuff like that. But it goes down way easier. Um, it, it it flows off of your, the brush way easier. It doesn't clump up. Or anything. A lot of times, I just use that for white altogether. Um, so, like the the most extreme highlights on this are all done in ceramite, um, ceramite on the the skull helm in there. So, just gonna kind of carry those same colors on there because at the end of the day, I really want to make sure all the different models in the army still kind of gel together uh, scheme wise and technique wise so that they all just look cohesive at the end so we have here with these muscles I'm actually gonna take this and 
it's a little bit, you see here, I'll just sit on this palette where you see the difference between the Dawnstone that we used as the brightest highlight on this and the Ceramite of how white that is. So I'm actually going to mix the two together, uh, Dawnstone and Othlon Gray, to get somewhere in the middle to make a little bit better of a highlight on this that's not quite as stark. You can just kind of judge based off of what we had dry before that to see where we want to go. So maybe a little bit more. Okay. So again, coming back in here looking at some of the uh, raised parts of the muscles. You want to keep this paint really wet and the, the highlight lines really thin. It will dim down a lot when we come back through with the um, the Drakenhof Nightshade Wash uh, mix alongside the Lamian Medium. That'll all kind of bring everything together but if you do it too much it'll just make the really really light parts stand out. So it's okay to be a little bit subtle here along the muscles that you want. To be a little bit pronounced. And again, you know, if it's too much, we can take a lighter or a darker colored gray. I mean, and go over it when it's watered down. And it'll be transparent enough that you still get a little bit of that highlight, but you've taken it and just kind of mellowed it out a little bit. So that's really kind of what we're going for here. Maybe another lighter one on the back side of the leg. So just kind of follow this muscle line down. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of Dawnstone here, get it on my palette, grab my Lamian Medium, fifty-fifty it with a little bit of that, make it really light. You'll kind of see if you can paint something next to it that how light it is. And then come back where you did your highlights, and then kind of the outer edges of it, just paint next to it. and you'll take those highlights that are maybe a little bit more sharp and smooth them out into the skin. And again, it's something that it takes time, but in my opinion is well worth the outcome. Once you see how nice of a of a transition you get on the skin of these things, and that really goes for any kind of skin tone, you can you can kind of take it and apply it across any of them. If you had four tones that you worked with, say your base coat, uh, which would be the um, Mechanicus standard, once you mix in that that uh, the nightshade, it takes that whole thing darker. So now this is now your mid tone and this plus the nightshade is the lowest, the, the darkest color that you want to get. And then you've got Dawnstone for your second one and Ulfone Gray for the lightest. Mix these two together for a nice highlight and then go back to your mid-tone and thin it down and then use that to smooth out your highest tone and it, it really brings everything together a little bit more and you get a nice smooth tone like that. And I'll probably spend more time 
uh, when when I have just some time, it'll probably take a few hours because stuff like these skin tones can can definitely take a lot of time um, to get in there and really get a nice gradient between the two so that it really does look like skin in the end and not just some type of you know it really takes that dry brush out but you need that at first to pull out some of those so some of the highest details all right so I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that around here we're going to do it to some areas on the face as well going to create a little bit more of it this time though so 50 50 Ulthorn gray and Dawnstone in our pot about the same that we had before can really grab some of the uh, Lamian medium as well or add it because this was a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be spin your brush into a really 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 fine point and just go through here and pick out some some high muscle details and then we're going to turn it right back into that part again over there doesn't need to be a lot less is more on this one you've already got you know there's already a, a pretty good deal of definition between some of the muscles here so just pick out the very highest areas and work your way down the model can go a little bit heavier towards the end since we are going from that dark to light from the top so the more you get around the feet it'll kind of bring that out a little bit more. I missed a spot over here where I want to get in on that inner edge there. Now this one here is my fault just because of the amount of time I had between building the model and working on it tonight but I did leave some of the mold lines here between its feet and when I attached it yeah it's a little lazy uh, but you can I can use some Dawnstone if I wanted to or maybe a little bit of uh, molding putty and just get it in there and push it into the cracks of those ones some of this you know similar color to what we were working on there and then blend it together and you shouldn't really see it too much if you put the paint down thick enough in there once it dries it'll blend together and you really won't see the lines too much uh, which I'll come back in later on and fix with so with some putty on the other feet that's a pretty big line I think that was some of the gripes that people had about some of these uh, easy to build sets where they didn't quite fit together perfectly. I had that a little bit on here with the shoulders. You'll notice there's a nice crease there where I have to blend those two lines together now uh, just because the mold line oddly goes right through a shoulder pad and I have to cover those up. Or at least I want to because you know, there's being no CD about it. Alright, so that's pretty much it for those two legs. For up here, we're going to come across the surface of this and down the outer muscle line to that foot, just like that. Across these where the knuckles are.
refresh my paint a little bit. Maybe focus on areas where it bends and the its skin is kind of coming together there. And right here. Around this area of the neck. Again, you can kind of see where it bunches up there. And that's not a bad spot for a little highlight. And then since it's stretching its neck over, I do want to get a little bit of a highlight there where you can pick out a few spots here behind its, its head and then maybe just kind of come right down like that. And again, just like all these things, you can see how much you see these highlights and we're going to come back, I'm going to come back and soften them out again just like, just like these ones here. I might even do these ones, soften them out even a little bit more just to really, really smooth out that skin. I don't, I don't want to see too many lines on it, but it's kind of a necessary step at this point. Without dry brushing the whole thing. You get some really, really good solid lines around the eyes and mouth. And if you can brighten these up as much as possible, it really adds a lot of character to the model to be able to see those details around its face. And we're going to lighten this up too because I'm going to be using uh, some Reichland Flesh Shade and some other warmer tones to kind of give it more of a, a skin tone shade around its face. Let's hit this back leg really quick. Looks like we have about 30, 30, 45 minutes left on uh, before we draw a winner. So again, exclamation raffle. Get entered in for Mr. Tech Priest here. Painted up a little while ago. Some custom Forge World markings and did all the bottles and stuff. Definitely had fun with them. But uh, it's the only one that I that I have, and I'm kind of done done with that army. So hopefully he'll go to a nice new home tonight. Kind of use the edge of the brush just to pick out some quick details here. do the same for the inside of the back of the legs where light might hit. Not really doing too much to the underside. Honestly, you really don't get to see it too much. Uh, so I just want to hit these these areas here. All right. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and give it the same treatment as I did here by lightening up Dawnstone and painting around all those highlights. Especially the areas of the face, though, I'm going to really, really thin it down um, to a very thin gray. Keep it pretty thin on the brush and just work between where I highlighted and what was already there. Not going to worry too much about all the spines on top of his head just because those will get some attention later. Be repainting those kind of a bluish color. So 
So see here, you kind of want to kind of want to paint a larger area than what you highlighted before to to bring up the areas around that light highlight. And you'll bring it out just even just a little bit more, just to just to smooth out those lines. If you're looking at this one, and oh wow, it's you know it's really light around his face. You can really see, you know, kind of the the stark lines where we painted um, you know there's going to be a lot of darker washes going down on those so those areas are going to really fade back into the skin I'm not not too too worried about how bright the face is I really want it to be like that I really want to get those details out there and put a lot of character into its face So again, the areas where I have the the skin kind of turning and stretching out here over the surface where he's turning his head, uh, doing a little bit larger areas around that to take these light highlights that we have here and just bringing them a little bit dimmer and blending them into the skin surface a little bit more. If it looks like it's getting overworked in an area or if it's not quite smooth or the lines aren't really smooth and you're getting there's you can see here where the lines are kind of breaking up a little bit between the main highlight and some areas where I have out let it dry uh, come back to it again you can always take go back to your Mechanicus Standard or Dawnstone that we used as those the second the mid-tones and bring those two back together again right there and just fade it right back into the to the background of the skin um, other areas like that, you know, this neck here that when we were saying, you know, kind of we're going to do some, some spots around there, some skin spots and stuff just to make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, might choose areas like that, or the large surface areas or areas where it looks like maybe the wash kind of kind of gave us some lines or something like that that I didn't really want to see uh, in the first place. Or if the dry brush area gets a little, little ragged, a little sketchy, a little bit more rough. Uh, anything that you can do to throw something on top of those. Uh, and cover those up um, you'd be surprised how much it breaks up some of those those details where you think oh I messed up now you know instead of trying to keep smoothing out and smoothing it out just put some put some details around it and it'll it'll detract away from those areas where it got a little bit rougher especially like here like you see on his back legs where the the highlight isn't perfectly smooth uh, and maybe I'm just kind of nitpicking my own work here, but maybe put some spots around those areas and it'll break that up really easily. Uh, again, on the tail, probably do a little bit of spots around, around there. Use this to kind of come between the two areas there. Wipe off a little bit with your hand and keep working and smoothing those areas out. You get a pretty decent transition of color there. Looks like a couple more people might have turned tuned in. Um, I am just gonna put out another reminder. Uh, type exclamation point raffle if you're on Twitch, and uh, we'll go ahead and get you signed up to to win this guy. Okay, so that's that's about where I want the skin to be highlighted to right now. Maybe come back through again a little bit later with that. I'm going to go ahead and do the purple wash up top. Yeah, I see someone already signed up. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and do the uh, the Druchi Violet, uh, really mixed down, and put that on top. 
and kind of get that purple going in there. And then once that's done, another lighter uh, lighter wash of the Drakenhof Nightshade plus Lamian Medium uh, on the bottom and bring those blue and purple together on that thing to really get the, the, the surface going. out a large wash brush which we're going to be using here I'm going to want to grab a new bowl for this this is dry it's fine snag a little bit of the druchy violet uh, I want to use Lamy medium first so as to not get a bunch of violet in there you want a lot of Lamy medium surprisingly amount surprising amount of it um, I don't want this to be very dark at all. Uh, I want it to be a really, really, really subtle, uh, almost like you're staining the top of the model purple. But if you use, if you don't mix it down with anything, it's either going to be A, really dark, or B, it's going to dry really harsh and get rid of all of the, the work that we've already done to keep the top of that smooth. So, see here, it's pretty dark, but I use a lot of it in the brush. Squeeze as much of it out of the brush as you can. Mix it up real good with that Lamy and Medium. And we might actually do a little bit more. That's that's even darker. That's still too dark for me. So get a good amount of that. Really mix it in there. And now we're going to go stay on the top of the model and mostly around the areas of the scales on the top of the tail Really get it in there. If areas look like it really pulls up too much, you can just use your finger and drag it away or keep working at it with the brush. You don't want to overdo it. Once it starts to dry, you don't want to touch it too much because then you'll start to kind of pull it around a little bit too much and it just kind of comes out looking a little funky. I'm going to do the same, I'm just going to do that to his face and then wipe off the surface to keep the, the highest of highlights. But we've already got, that's why we kept it so bright in the first place because I'm going to start putting some levels of wash over it. So you see there, it's subtle, but I think it's kind of a purplish hue to the top of them and makes that skin tone even a little bit more believable. <laughs> Last thing that I want to do for the skin is come back in with the Lamy Medium Plus Drakenhof Nightshade, the blue, and do the rest of the body with that. So again, same method, get a ton of Lamy and Medium, kind of test the side of, the, of a white cup if you want to do that. If it's still too dark, you know, wash your brush off, get some more Medium 
in there. You can always start with the medium. Uh, I know I'm going to be using a pretty good amount of it. So. going to take everything that we did and throw it just a little bit darker but because of the medium in there it shouldn't dry funny at all we should be able to it should dry nice and smooth if it pulls up a little too much just keep it moving you can kind of apply this theory to really working on the skin tones and then what I think the very 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 last step that I'll do for this is come back to the lower feet with some of the lighter gray and just do an ex like a really 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 light dry brush to that And then wipe your brush off, get it dry, no paint at all, and then just kind of areas where it pulls up too much, just poke at it a little bit and pick up some of that paint and it won't dry funny. So then we got a little bit too much here on the surface of the, the bottom side of the knees, right there on the back side of the leg. You can kind of wipe at it a little bit with the brush and it'll smooth out. So that's pretty much the finished result there of the skin on the Dracoline. I'm going to come back in on the face with some grays and bring some of that light. It's, it's a little too light, but I'm keeping it there like that for now because I want to stain it with with some of the more natural color washes and make this thing look a little bit I don't know, not all cold flush I guess so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now just to kind of show an example of of that where you can use so I'm using Reichlin flush shade more of a reddish uh, really warm tinted skin tone this uh, this wash also is fantastic on uh, like Retributor armor some of the really warmer gold armors look really really nice with um, with this and again this uh, this guy here um, to do this kind of dirty blue uh, painted it with uh, Thunderhawk blue uh, to start with and then washed it with red um, kind of picked that up off of uh, Duncan that does all those paint streams for the, the how to paints for GW um, did it for a Scion's paint scheme and since then I was like, oh, that's, that looks really awesome when you take a, a colder blue and and shade it with a with a warm shade. I always thought it looked pretty sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Get some on the brush and then thin it out with some water. I'll work around his mouth and nose underneath the eyes just kind of warm up the skin a little bit around those areas if you get too much on your brush here my brush is a little bit heavy with it just wipe it off and pick some back up with it So again, you take that kind of a colder tone that you have. If you want to, you also could to kind of get a little bit of a repetition, make it look a little bit more deliberate, kind of put it around the feet too, where that skin kind of comes up to his knuckles, warm that skin up a little bit as well. 
kind of gives it a nice natural look. In any of the areas where it looks like um, I have white highlights, or the, that really light highlight, you can see it's pretty obvious in the lips here where the, the light creeps into that darker skin a little bit too much, in my opinion. And I'm going to take the darker gray, maybe get a little bit on the brush, and then drag it down into this lighter area and keep those light highlights real small. Uh, for now, though, I wanted it kind of big just to kind of see how the warmer tone kind of acts with it. And then we'll do some really, really bright eyes in there, and then it should really come to life. So, all right, I'm gonna let that dry. We got about 25 minutes left. Um, so again, just dropping another reminder. Uh, we'll probably about quarter after do the raffle for the, the tech priest. So about 10 more minutes. So anyone uh, in Twitch, exclamation raffle, uh, get that, get a chance at this dude here. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that at quarter after eight. More than 10 minutes. Let's go back to our <clears throat> rider here. It's getting close to the point where we can mount her on the, the Dracoline. I want to be able to paint all this first though, um, just because it's covered up and I don't want to hit any of the new areas. And I have to do the saddle and the sides. We're going to do that in the same type of red as her robes just to kind of carry those tones uh, across and make them look like they're together at least. Um, but for now, uh, I want to do a quick wash here on the red and gold to tone those down a little bit. While that dries, uh, we'll go ahead and do the saddle and the side robes on the Dracoli. If it isn't obvious yet, I'm definitely not finishing this today. Uh, I may either have to finish it later on in another stream or however we end up working that out. Uh, again, I'm out here at Immortals in Rocky River. Really, really cool place. They got a nice shop set up here. So if you're not just into Warhammer, but you have board games and uh, MTG and all kinds of different card card based games are just a cool place to come hang out owners are real nice so I'm going right over top of the screamer pink and corn red bring that in real dark and then the, the raised areas on those hit those again with corn red uh, it's kind of the kind of the standard technique, at least for me. Uh, hit it with the base, wash it, go back with that same base over the larger areas, or the more raised up areas, and then start working your highlights. So highlights that we'll start doing are uh, then Mephiston red or blood red for the uh, my old school people out there, um, and. Then we'll come back over the screamer pink with what is it? Pink horror, and then almost a white on, on on the pink to get that really 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 bright highlight on there. Uh, you can see on the shoulders and chest where it's already kind of started to tone that down a little bit, and then we can go over it in retributor gold, gold really warm up that color, hit it again with uh, Reichland flesh shade to kind of put a red warm tone yeah I know I won't finish with this attitude wrong I've completely given up on <laughs> on finishing it up I know it's defeatist but yeah that's me um, and then uh, after we wash over it in Reichland on top of the retributor armor 
uh, then can go into Liberator Gold, which is a really kind of silvery gold, or you can skip that all together and just go straight to I like to go straight to um, Storm Stormhost Silver on a really really extreme highlight and get that gold really really nice and flashy and bright. Um, I know some people don't like that; they like non-metal metallics. Uh, I have not actually gotten into that yet myself. Uh, if anyone wants to comment on how much they like those or any techniques uh, or do dropping a message uh, let me know because I'd like to learn more about it but I'm always just like eh, I'll just stick with what I know So again, in uh, what now, two weeks, three weeks, uh, Chris and I are going to be doing a uh, multi-stream here, where the two of us are painting a, a rubric marine, uh, two hours, really see how far we can get on it, um, and just, I don't know, kind of have fun painting it and goof around a little bit. Uh, seemed like a fun idea, so we'll give that a try. So definitely uh, they'll post that up on Immortals page and uh, you can kind of see what time you want to tune into that if you want to check it out. So yeah now you can see we've gotten it a lot darker on both sides of this. The back is even darker now. Um, we'll really really brighten that up uh, to look just like the rest of them. I really want this to end up kind of along the same lines as that uh, and the the under parts of the the cloak and the insides of the arms to look just like that that kind of pink with that highlight and then took this kind of freehand thorn branch look saw it on some of the armor in the books really like the idea uh, instead of the armor I'm going to be putting in all their cloaks a lot of the sacrosanct models wear big cloaks, and so I'll probably be putting something like that on the back of her too. Be pretty prominent on the back side of the model. Uh, got about five minutes left here before we go ahead and do this raffle. Uh, again, anyone exclamation raffle get yourself entered. Looks like there's only a few people in it right now, so chances are pretty decent. I'm gonna let that dry and do the same kind of thing over here. I'm um, gonna go ahead and paint the saddles with uh, a brown, the saddle bags, everything around the sword in brown, all of the uh, the reins, especially now since we're not doing that much work on the skin behind it, can really start focusing on all these upper details uh, to, to do work on that one. And then it's all just gonna get uh, washed with Agrax Earthshade. Um, it's such a, a uh, versatile wash uh, unless you want to kind of go for a colder tone Nolan oil that the black wash does really great for that when you're doing silvers and anything that you really want dark um, had some uh, some of the sometimes when you do it when I was doing red or purple uh, washing it with uh, the, the same color that we had before so a uh, caribou crimson wash over red first to bring it even deeper and then again with Nolan Oil to bring it even deeper and then working back up with the same kind of tones that we had before it really gives you a ton of depth in those colors uh, especially you know your, your warmer tones uh, yellows reds purples stuff like that you can really really get a lot of nice nice detail and pop on those uh, if you put a little bit of extra work into doing the the mid tones and, and shades on those before you bring those highlights in so let's go ahead and grab where are you dryad bark pretty dark not quite the darkest brown out there but decently dark uh, does a good job for leather uh, be washing it with non-oil uh, to get kind of a black wash over it 
and then taking a um, either a vein blade brown, those really lighter browns, and, and doing some, some highlights like that. So let's go ahead and just start hitting these saddles and all of the straps and, and reins on him. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit at the edges. I don't want to hit the skin that I just did, that we just spent, you know, 75% of the stream working on. Is it ready for the raffle? Yeah, yeah, eight, quarter after, quarter after eight. We're going to go ahead and do the raffle. We're going to have fire that up here in a second. Um, they're heading back. Uh, all the entries that we had, and we'll see. Hmm? Oh really? Yeah. It's fine. Do we want to? There are currently two people on the raffle for this, so I can go ahead and fire it off. Give it a fifty-fifty shot. A little bit sleepier night on the stream, or uh, can wait for a few more entries. Probably the two people that are in there right now wouldn't mind. <laughs> but, uh. One second. Anki 2014. Uh, we'll go ahead, stay on the stream after we're done, and we'll go ahead and get your info, and uh, I'll toss it in the mail to you. Should we go? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Good to go. So, gonna go ahead here for another 15 minutes or so, and getting all these kind of straps painted. We'll probably get a good chunk of the details done on the mount tonight. And that'll be that. trying to be as careful as possible with these. Yeah, these uh these draculines can be pretty time consuming to paint. I don't know if I can imagine that entire army of them. Then again an entire army is like twelve of them. So, maybe not too bad after all. all right, let's get the ones around his face again being as careful as possible to not get the skin. If we get the scales, that's okay. Because I'll be painting over those.
and then a little bit of a shade around the straps and stuff just to kind of darken the skin around where it's touching them. That'll kind of be next. And then a highlight on those to bring them out since they're pretty much the most raised surface there. And I think there's one that goes under his jaw too. Yep. So we'll go ahead and grab that. So that's really it. So, you know, you'll notice in, whoops, yep, so there I go. Uh, have to grab some gray later on and hit those spots where the brown got on them. So, uh, you know, maybe check back on comments on this later um, to see if, you know, either I can keep going on this on another stream and you can see the rest of it painted up or you know, really got an idea of the, the, the base coat and regular or not in regular um, you know which paints are really going where and kind of what it looks like finished sort of with another model um, so I can either on a new stream start a whole new model later a uh, smaller one maybe uh, that can get a little bit more work done at once uh, or pick back up with this and finish it again. If I start a new one, maybe paint this one up in the next couple days on my own and post a uh, nice light box picture of it uh, in the comments here if people want to see this thing when it's finished. Just thought it would be something fun to do. Needed one anyways for the Path to Glory that we're doing. Uh, for my leader and always really liked it pretty fantastic you know price for one of these things um, especially being you know leader model on on a big mount went together fairly easily uh, I think GW recently is getting really really fantastic with uh, some of their single big build kits I really like how these things turn out of the belts on the other side here again as you as you bring up the details of all of the stuff around there it really kind of pushes the skin tones into the background you know it's just what your eyes kind of are drawn to as you go so I'm gonna gonna clean up some of these warmer tones here and make those more highlights instead of just look like it was kind of stained um, that'll be the next step to really getting that face done and uh, more natural kind of skin lines and stuff like that. That'll be some really, really fine highlights. But for now, we're just going to keep painting the leather belts that are all over this dude. up in there. Try my best to really keep it clean in here. Doesn't really look like there's anything on the back side except for some of these little lines and stuff, but that's gonna be a different color altogether. That's really it for the brown. Do a different color back here. Oh. While we got it out, I'm going to hit these straps to go across the sword. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
just going to hit the general area and I'll paint around it with silver. Silver's pretty, again, covers pretty well. Same for the packs. And then I might do these in the same color actually too. And put a little bit more of a highlight for these little book satchels that are on the sides. Lots of, lots of cool little details on these. Should do it for that. So probably have enough time here to hit the two pieces of cloth going down the sides. In the same red that I'm going to be doing for Estrella's robes. Don't really worry about those bumps in there. Let's just leave those as paint free as possible because that's where the glue is going to go to attach her we'll do our best to not hit the model with this because red is tough to cover up being especially careful here because it goes between the creases of the back leg maybe go in the opposite direction there and work that way it's a little bit easier to control Alright, so that takes care of that. Real nice bright color along kind of all the grays and stuff that we have there. That'll do it for me for tonight. Uh, again, uh, name's James Brunich. Had a good time kind of working on this for a while tonight. Uh, maybe toss something in the comments on Facebook or Twitch whether you want to see this thing kind of continue. Um, and keep painting it. There's probably you know a good number of time-consuming steps left before we really get into the highlights on it, just because it's a big model with a lot to paint. Um, but you know, ultimately, pretty cool, pretty cool outcome. Uh, if not, I'll pick something else and throw a picture of this up in the comments when it's all done. So, till then, take it easy, everyone. Uh, Aki, stay on there. We'll get a message over to you and figure out uh, to get the uh, Domus over to you. So, till then, everyone, have a good night. Thanks.